So it's been a pretty common occurrence over the past couple of years to see major cut content from various Pokemon games being leaked out to the public. However, the games this content comes from, despite being cut itself, still made it out onto store shelves. So what about Pokemon games that got cut entirely? Well, today we're going to look into just that and take a look at every Pokemon game that almost happened, but didn't for one reason or another. While this list is pretty comprehensive, I am also human as well, so on the small chance I missed a game on this list, I apologize in advance. Before we get into that though, I would like to give a huge thank you as well as share a short message from today's sponsor, Moore Park College. Beginning the video is probably the most intriguing game on this list, and that would be Pocket Monsters 64. This was a game that was planned for the Nintendo 64 DD, which was a commercial failure and never made it outside of Japan. Although almost nothing is known about the game and was only mentioned directly a couple of times, it seemingly was a title that was going to be more akin to main series Pokemon games as opposed to some of the spin-offs on 64 like Pokemon Stadium. This is because Game Freak has been listed as the developer of the title, and the game has also been referred to as Pocket Monsters RPG. We would later receive a more traditional Pokemon title on console in the form of Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness on the GameCube, but it's unknown if these are related in any way to the cancelled 64DD title. Speaking of the GameCube, another kinda sorta lost game that was made for the GameCube was Meowth's Party. Meowth's Party was an interactive tech demo that was made for the GameCube to show off its capabilities, but much like many other tech demos, it was never converted into an actual game. However, it was reportedly one of the only tech demos at Nintendo Space World 2000, where it was featured, that was interactive, so maybe some playable version was planned after all. A similar version of Meowth's Party was also featured in the Pokemon Channel GameCube game, although it's unknown if that was the ultimate goal that was planned for the demo or not. Have you ever dreamed about a Pokemon game where Psyduck graces the front cover? Well, even though you probably haven't, it almost happened, as during the development of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Psyduck was considered and almost picked as one of the box art Pokemon instead of Eevee. This was due to Psyduck being one of Junichi Masuda's favorite Pokemon, and could have had something to do with the fact that Psyduck was one of Misty's signature Pokemon in the anime, just like Pikachu is for Ash, considering the Let's Go games are remakes of Yellow, which is based on the anime. However, Game Freak ultimately held back from making Let's Go Psyduck a reality, since there was a bit of a color clash with Pikachu, as they are both yellow Pokemon, which according to Masuda wouldn't really make for a good counterpart Pokemon for these games alongside the mascot of the franchise. This next one is somewhat speculative, but has a substantial amount of evidence to back it up. It is entirely possible that a standard, enhanced version of Sword and Shield, featuring Eternatus as its primary Pokemon, was planned and considered before Game Freak decided to do DLC for the games instead. This is partially due to the Pokemon Company's reasoning for doing DLC instead of an enhanced version in the first place. In interviews, they stated that while they were apprehensive about the idea, they did like the idea of players being able to continue their adventure on the save file that they had already created for Sword and Shield, as opposed to starting from scratch with a new game. That, combined with Sword and Shield's story incorporating Eternatus as the 
third main Galar Legendary from the get-go, something that would typically only happen in a third enhanced version, definitely lends itself to the idea that that was going to be the plan before they ultimately decided to go with DLC instead. When it comes to enhanced versions of games, it seems like there have actually been multiple that have been canned, including an additional Gen 1 game called Pokemon Pink, that seems like it was meant to release alongside Pokemon Yellow. Evidence of this comes from a recent leak of Pokemon Yellow's source code that mentions a Pokemon Pink, and also appears to have room allocated for more of the anime voices for Pokemon, similar to Pikachu's, suggesting that it could have been for Pokemon Pink's box art Pokemon. This also lines up with the fact that Clefairy was also made into Pokemon's mascot instead of Pikachu, who is iconically pink, but it could have also seen Jigglypuff take up the box art role as well, given its popularity in the anime. It's unknown why this game would have been cancelled, but it's possible that a second enhanced Gen 1 game was ultimately thought to be unnecessary, or it could have been feared that the pink branding could have alienated young male players. Pokemon Z has long been speculated to have been in development before it was inexplicably cancelled, due to the enormous feeling of unfinishedness that emanates from the Kalos titles. Well, thanks to yet another source code leak, this time coming from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it was essentially confirmed that Pokemon Z was a planned thing, as there is space reserved in the data of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, listing two Kalos based titles in addition to X and Y. The confirmation of this is exciting for sure, but the fact that there were apparently two games planned instead of just one is intriguing. Surely one of them would have featured Complete Zygarde as their box art legendary, but who might the other game have featured? Another form of Zygarde perhaps? Maybe the Eternal Flower Floette? It's impossible to know for sure, but what is definitely certain is that these games should have definitely released and gave Kalos the definitive titles that it deserved. Next are some titles that aren't so much games, most likely, as they are actual titles, but they are absolutely worth noting. Over the years, Game Freak has trademarked a number of titles for various Pokemon games that to this day have never released, including Pokemon Topaz, Pokemon Tourmaline, Pokemon Moonstone, Pokemon Brown, Pokemon Gray, Pokemon Vermilion, Pokemon Purple, Pokemon Crimson, and Pokemon Scarlet. It is most likely the case that these titles were trademarked to cover Game Freak's bases and protect them in case someone randomly tried to trademark them themselves, meaning that they were most likely never seriously considered to be made into actual games. However, that might not be the case for all of these titles, as I could very easily see Pokemon Brown being a potential Gen 1 version of Let's Go Eevee that could have been considered, and there's also that same potential for another one of these titles, namely Pokemon Grey. Pokemon Grey is another fabled Pokemon game that never happened. Whether it was the plan at some point, or is just speculation, is still technically up in the air, but as I just mentioned, the name was, at the very least, trademarked by Game Freak themselves. In addition, Junichi Masuda has name-dropped Pokemon Grey on multiple occasions, referencing how it was the expected direction for Game Freak to take following Pokemon Black and White, which is one reason why they made Black and White 2 instead. He has also mentioned Pokemon Grey when talking about how the title itself would actually clash with the theme of opposing forces that are in Black and White, considering Grey is literally a blend of the two. We can't really complain too much about this one, considering Black and White 2 are, for all intents and purposes, a Pokemon Grey, but the idea of it as a lost Pokemon game is certainly fascinating regardless. A smaller yet still interesting Pokemon title that was cancelled, that actually saw a formal reveal and promotion, is Pokemon Picross. Pokemon Picross was planned to release for the Game Boy, and was announced in 1999. 
However, for one reason or another, this game never came out and laid on the cutting room floor for years, until it was actually revived for the 3DS in 2015 as a free-to-download title. Considering both of these versions of Pokemon Picross were made by the same developer, Jupiter Corporation, it's likely that it is in fact a proper revival of that original Game Boy game that was cancelled all those years ago. This next one is a bit of a different pick, but I felt like it was warranted, and that is the original Pokemon Gold and Silver. Obviously, Gold and Silver did come out, but the original vision for the game that we were lucky enough to see thanks to the 1997 Space World demo leak is vastly different and practically a different game all its own. The Johto region is vastly different in this version and was based on all of Japan, minus the Kanto region of course. There were tons of Pokemon that never made the final games, obviously there were tons more towns and cities to explore that we never saw since the region was so much bigger, and even the story seemed different, as Professor Oak was the regional professor, you originally had a brother, and Misty and Giovanni were in the Elite Four for heaven's sake. Gold and Silver, along with their remakes, are still my favorite Pokemon games to this day, but even with that said, I really wish we would have had the chance to play this version as well, because it looks freaking amazing. And lastly is the hypothetical Pokemon Water Blue. This one is likely not one that was outright cancelled, but could have been considered at one point. I say this because Junichi Masuda name-dropped Pokemon Water Blue when discussing Fire Red and Leaf Green, which Water Blue would have been the equivalent to. He mentioned why Leaf Green was made in favor of Water Blue, citing Green being one of the original games in Japan, and the opposing themes of Fire and Water that he felt didn't fit well for the remakes. Given that Green was only ever released in Japan though, and the fact that Water Blue was clearly on Masuda's mind, suggests that Game Freak could have possibly been developing Pokemon Leaf Green as Pokemon Water Blue before they decided to change the name. It would have basically been the same game regardless, so it's not like it's a true cancellation, but it's worth noting if nothing else. So what do you think of this list of Pokemon games that almost happened? Would you have wanted any of these to actually be released? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe if you're new for more Pokemon content all the time. You can also further support the channel by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by watching my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, which makes a huge difference and is massively appreciated. So thank you in advance for supporting that. With that said, I will be back very soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later.